Hi guys, welcome back to the episode of DB Cars and today's episode I'll be reviewing Charette BMW 1160D. So let's dive straight to this video right now. Alright then, so here is guys the BMW 1160 from Sherrod itself. So basically, I'll be running with you guys the damages for this car before I show you guys the interior as well as the trunk space. So let me just start off with the in the damages for this car. Right? So basically, the first up, the first damage I would say will be right here at the bottom itself. As you guys can see, it does suffer some scrape right at the bottom itself. Uh, moving on, you got some weird ass scratch right here on the area. Not too sure if you can see, this is like some scratches right here itself. Moving on, there's some splatter right here itself, which is a little bit weird. I think this can be cleaned off with a simple wash of the car itself. But uh, some of the things like that can't be cleaned off will be this second stretch right here itself, as you guys can see. This is also another part. You see the front bumper has some scratches already itself. Next up, you got a dent, which is right here itself. So basically, if you guys were to rent this exact car, you just need to look at this area itself. So basically, this area has been dented from the normal wheel lining itself you can see there's an obvious then right here itself so yeah uh that's the second damage no that's the third damage sorry the fourth damage will be this side swipe right here on the side itself so yeah and then i think that is all for the damages for this car wise now we're showing you guys the trunk space for this car wise let me just close this properly first so yeah the trunk space for the 160 to access it very simple just need to push on the bmw emblem and the trunk will open up so basically once the trunk is open up this is how the space the cargo space for the car looks like not really much space you could put in i think probably you could put one medium size suitcase in or a large suitcase in i think medium size suitcase you put inside i think probably for this you could put a medium size suitcase inside maybe add on a, a, some duffel bags or some sort like a small duffel bag and i think that's probably it other than that you can stack on top as well stack on top of the Luggages, that's what I say. So, yeah, but I think if you put a large suitcase in, then maybe same thing, duffel bag. Then, yeah, and that that's probably it for the cargo space itself for this car itself. But one thing you do get is you get some hooks right there to hook onto the area that you want to hook onto so that it does not roll around in the car. You also get some of this very nice hook thing on either side of the car itself. If I'm not wrong, this should have come with the parcel tray, but uh, no. Doesn't. That's the battery for the car itself. Yeah, seems like it doesn't have it at all. So yeah, but it got some storage space on either side, on that side to put your stuff and a well, more hook right here. This itself lah. So yeah, now I'll be showing you guys how to have have more space in the car if you want to. So basically, if you guys want to have more space in this car itself, you can actually technically do so by holding down the rear seat itself. So basically, just need to drop this down and drop. The other side down, which is just by pressing on this lever right here itself. So basically, once I push on this, just push downward, and this is basically the space you will get for the 116D once you have the cargo space fully down itself. So, tons more space if you want to have, like, maybe do a small IKEA run for this type of stuff, definitely would be possible itself. Oh, GTR. Anyway, back to it. Uh, so yeah, that's how I think a small IKEA run will be possible in this car, but a bigger one like maybe furniture-wise, doubt is possible. I think if you want to do a furniture one, I think probably an X3 or uh, a van will be possible itself. Uh, but and that to pull back the rear seat is very very simple. Just do the alternate way around, and the seat will uh, be back up itself. Uh, so let me just put that seat back up, and I'll show you guys in the rear seat of the BMW 160 so yeah uh, close the, the trunk space for this very simple just need grab hold on this and the just stick it down itself so yeah uh, just know what I mentioned of the emblem is basically just need to push this down and you're able to access the trunk itself so yeah and for the fuel tank just need to press on either side and you're able to fill up the car but for this car right, it's diesel itself uh, so just take note of that but other than that, let me just show you guys the rear of the car. Right? Alright then, now let's jump straight into the rear seat of the BMW 116D itself. So basically, jumping in isn't a big problem because the door is open quite wide itself, which is a good thing. Next, right now, okay, so basically this is how the interior of the, how it looks like when you're inside the 116D itself. 
quite nice and spacious. I would say spacious to a point that's comfortable, but it's all right. Yeah, I think it's like on the same level as the Lexus CT200 hatchback, which I reviewed previously itself. So, okay. Uh, let me just let me just show you guys my space-wise for this car. So this is my normal drawing position right here, as you guys can see. Uh, space-wise, I got maybe one piece of leg room rise. Hip room rise, not too much but also same thing one piece as well so yeah not really the much not really the best storage option for this car sorry not really the best uh space you can say to put to sit in the back but i think if you're a slightly taller person probably you'll have an issue with it shorter person won't really have any problem at all so yeah probably open the door because it's quite hot in this car without it being on but let me just Okay, never mind. Um, so yeah, basically what in, in the back, what do you get? Well, basically you get your door handle right itself, your window switches, your handle to close the door itself, the grab handle to hold itself in when the car is uh, coming, like accelerating corners. You also got some AC vent right here itself, which is quite nice. For the AC vent, you guys got your climate control right here and your fan speed right here itself. So yeah, and right down below, you got a 12 volt socket outlet itself. And that that is all for the rear of the car itself. You unfortunately do not get any center armrest to rest your arm on. The only place you can rest your arm on is on the doors itself, which is right there itself. But other than that, that's basically it for this car wise. Sitting three percent of rest. Well, let me just answer your question to that. Let me oh my god. I need to hold my oh my god. Oh shit. Okay, sitting in the center seat, how does it feel like? Well, not really the best cause this seat from the previous user is quite far back and I'll have a problem getting to this side if I'll be sitting on the left but uh, I'll say also the same issue as the 5 series my review for the 5 series which will, uh, which will be coming out at the end of this month itself so do keep look out for that but I'll say this has, it is the same consistent problem that it has for this generation of BMW mainly the I think the F series itself like, so yeah this issue itself which is the transmission tunnel being too high it's the same issue at the 3 series as well as the 5 series this one series also have the same issue which i am experiencing right now so that's really not the best thing but i don't think short journeys wise i think won't be an issue in this place even though uh as you guys can see i'm sitting in the middle right here imagine if someone were to sit right beside me on the left and the right it definitely will be a squeeze the first will definitely be touching shoulder to shoulder and it won't be comfortable at all and let's tell me your short journey wise in the 5 series or long journey wise in the short or long journey wise in the 5 series then wouldn't be a problem at all because it's, it's a slightly bigger car than the 1 series itself because it's a much more how to say the, the, the red the, in the BMW lineup the 5 series is like slightly in between the 3 series and the 7 series itself this 1 series like right at the bottom the best scratching bone where it's, it's your entry level BMW why so not really the best itself so yeah and that, um, what else do you get in this car? Well, you get some isofixion point right here to put your child seats on if you want to, which is a good thing. So, yeah. But, and that, that's, oh yeah, you also got reading length right here if you want to read in the car. Same for the other side as well. And the center is if, let's say, you want the interior to be light up itself. Lah. So, yeah. But, and that, that is all for the one series rear. Now, let me just show you guys the front of the one series itself. So, and if anyone wondering this, how the interior looks like itself. Lah. So, all right then. Now, let's jump right out into the getting out of the one series. It's a small issue because it's a, even though it's a hatchback, I think getting out won't be an issue if you know your the proper technique of getting up itself so yeah all right then now let me just show you guys the front of the one all right then now let's jump right into the front seat of the one series so what uh let me just run through with you guys some of the bits that you get for the one series itself so basically first out the storage compartment not really the best as you guys can see Just okay one thing i can say is it's slightly better yeah, it's slightly better than the storage compartment for the 5 series itself because it's slightly bigger and I let me, for example, this is someone else's water bottle. I could comfortably put that in and probably I could put some more junk, right? Maybe a, a small item right inside there and it won't be an issue at all. So, yeah, uh, moving on, you got next one, which is this cubby space right here itself. 
so yeah this cubby space right here you guys just nice and see it's, it's not really the deepest and it's the same thing which shares from the the 5 series itself and also, I think the 3 series also had the same problem itself is the storage compartment for the center is not really that deep compared to its rival during the era itself like. so yeah I think yeah I can't for say, say for the A3 neither can I say for the C class or E class of that generation itself but um, I think I'll have to give you guys an update again when I review the E class for that generation, the twenty mid twenty fifteen generation itself. I will give you an update when I review that car itself. But other than that, you got Type A port right there to plug in your infotainment if you want to. But other than that, that is all you get like, for this storage compartment. There isn't any secret compartment. To, oh wait, oh, wait, hold up. Um, no, I don't think you can leave this. No. No, you can't. There's nothing right down below there. It's just the plastic bit itself. So yeah, guys, you can see there's not really much storage option for the one series as well. So yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, you might thinking one series is like the entry level BMW that will set a. In my opinion, I think will set the impression for people that starting to get to BMW itself. If you talk about storage option, not really the best and cubby space storage option. Like I think maybe if the storage option is not that good, I think probably they would move over to the rivals itself so but can't really say much for time being that like, source i haven't tried out wait i think i tried uh yeah um but main thing is storage option not really the best on this car unless you want to put it at the door bins right there or here itself like. so yeah uh moving on you got the iDrive system right here which is the same as the 5 series and 3 series which i already reviewed i think it's also the same as the 2 series which i also have reviewed already so yeah uh, i'll put a the link at the end of this video to my 5 series review which is coming out sorry I'll put a link to the 3 series review at the end of this video itself as well as the link to my 2 series video is 2 series BMW 216i from get go itself so all my BMW reviews I'll just leave it right at the end itself so if you guys want to check out you can definitely check it out itself like. so yeah this thing I will just run through with you guys later on it's for just a quick summary of it so yeah uh, moving on you got your iDrive system Sorry, your transmission itself so basically for bmw itself to engage gear is very very simple just need to press on step on the brake itself press on this and pull downwards and you'll just and and it will engage into gear itself to park the car itself very very simple just need to press on the p right at the top and the car will, park, will be set into park mode itself so yeah moving on you got your traction control button right here itself as well as the Yeah, as well as your sports mode and your eco mode itself and your parking sensors right here itself so very very simple uh same thing which i showed on the five series i'll show you guys later on in the one series as well so stay tuned you got your parking sensors right there itself nothing much you can see you got your cup holders right here itself which you could put your drinks if you want to let me see i can put this this drink for example yeah so yeah perfectly inside here and this is a 750 ml bottle which fit perfectly as snug into the seat itself so yeah all right then moving on you got this very nice tray right here to put your stuff if you want to so uh let's say you can't fit any more stuff here i think you can put stuff here if you want to uh. so yeah other than that that's basically all for the center console itself now i'll be showing just how the controls right here itself so for the controls right here itself, it's very very simple itself. You got your AC fans right here itself. These are the controls for the infotainment right here, and you got your. I'm not too sure why this, but I think this should be for the climate control thing. But uh, yeah, I think this should be for the climate itself. So yeah, no sorry. I think the climate control are right here on either side for the passenger and driver. This I have really haven't figured out what it is, but you got your locking and unlock mechanism right here, and your headlight -like switch right at the top itself. So yeah. Uh, right at the top right here, you got your infotainment screen itself, which share the same thing on the 2 series itself. So basically the 216i, and if I'm not wrong, the 218i as well. But the two in, uh, uh, but yeah, main thing I know is they share the same screen itself. And the, in, overall, the infotainment itself for the, throughout, I think this series of BMW itself share the same thing as well. So yeah, other than that, um, I won't be going through it too in-depth about it because I already 
it's just basically the shortcut keys that people, if you want to program it, you can actually technically program this itself. So your volume knob right here to adjust the volume itself, and this to adjust the radio station, and this is to adjust the mode of media that you want. So basically, if, if you select mode, it will just run through basically aux port, which is through the auxiliary USB Type A port right there. The car radio, built-in radio itself, or the Bluetooth audio for this car, if it does have it itself. But so, yeah. And that, that's all for the, this car itself. Now let me just run through some of the buttons on the steering wheel. Button on the steering wheel is very very simple itself. The you guys can see this is your speed, your cruise control if you guys can call it. But um, to me, I think this is just a step down from the five series, which five sorry a step down from the three and five series, which it does has the the. I, basically, this only the only thing that this does is just limit the speed you're going itself. It doesn't really hold the speed you want to go um but unlike the 5 series which has the like you can resume the speed you want to you want to, to cruise at but for the 1 series it doesn't have that you only have like you can limit the speed you're, you want to go itself and you basically can't go anything higher than that you only can go be slower than let's say the set speed of 90 itself so yeah on the other side it's the same thing you got your entertainment controls right here itself this to adjust the volume pick up Basically, this to answer the phone or answer the phone, your voice control, and this is your dial right here to adjust a small thing right here, which I'll show you guys later on as well. Uh, you got your indicators right here itself. Very, very simple. To activate high beam, you just need to push forward. To activate, yeah, to flash your high beam, you just need to pull back and you activate, you activate your high beam itself. Uh. So, yeah. Uh, this one I'm not too sure what this does, but if I'm not wrong, I did mention my previous video already itself. Uh. So, you guys want to know about that i think probably i'll discover that later on when i turn on the car itself so yeah on the other, the other side sorry on the other side you got your wipers control it switch right here itself to activate it just all the way up all the way down or set it one in the center for the auto uh wipers itself and you got switch right here to wash the wipers at the back itself and this is to activate the windscreen washer windscreen washer at the back of the car itself so yeah to wash the windscreen, just need to pull back. Sorry, to, to activate the front, just need to pull back and you wash the front itself. So, yeah. Other than that, that is all for the front of the car itself. To adjust the steering wheel, just need to pull on this lever right here and it will just, this lever will drop down and you can adjust the volume itself. You got a start stop button right here itself and this to turn off the photo stop start function on the car itself. Uh, last but not least, you got your light switch right here itself. So, basically, this to adjust the lights on the the, the 116i sorry the 116d you got front and rear fog light itself and your light switch right here itself uh next up we got more of the win window control switches right here itself to adjust the windows itself so we need this to fold in the mirrors this to adjust the mirror itself these two buttons right here and this to adjust the four mirrors on the car itself and this to prevent people from rolling on the window itself and that I think that's basically it for this car. So yeah, oh yeah, and you got your hood and your trunk release button right there itself. So basically double pull to access the engine compartment and one press of that button at the top to access the rear trunk. And you also got your OBD port right there itself. Like. So yeah. Also you got a very nice secret compartment right here if you want to hide your stuff itself. So yeah. On that uh, last but not least you got your sun visors right here itself. But this is quite nice. Same for the passenger side, and you got your light switch right here itself. Not too sure if you guys can see, but yeah, light switch right here itself. So yeah, got a roadside system, and that's probably it for this car. You also got grab handle nearly. Basically, uh, this car is a little bit weird itself. Somehow you don't have grab handle in the front. This I think definitely already been drop off which is right here itself i think the previous person that rented it placed it right here itself like. but the only, you only got grab handles right at the back for the passenger itself so yeah and that uh let me just turn on the car so you guys some of the features for this car wise so for the brake itself and just start the car so so basically now the car is turned on uh, so basically, this is how it looks like so address in touch the address system is slightly less complicated there's lesser button on the address system for the one one series itself for the five series itself which i reviewed earlier on uh sorry in my upcoming video itself there is more 
shortcut keys that the driver can access to if they want to itself. But for the 116i, it's only menu, media menu, menu, sorry, media menu and communication, which is the contact list that you have for the car itself. So, yeah, menu is just this. Radio is the just go to the radio itself. Uh. So, yeah, that's probably it for this car entertainment. Sports mode, if you want to get sports mode, you just you know, press on this and you'll see right down below that you can access the whatever mode that you want to access to. So, yeah, for this, it's also quite simple itself. You can adjust the radio station using this swivel thing right here at the bottom. So, yeah, and once you found the radio station you want to, you just press on it and you'll select the radio station you want to itself. So, yeah. Other than that, that is all for this car wise. If you guys enjoy the video itself, do click the subscribe button. Oh yeah, uh, let me just run through this mode. See, the mode is just basically this. Uh, so, yeah, not really much to see itself. So, yeah, that's probably it for this video itself. So, yeah, you guys enjoy the uh Oh yeah, uh, last but not least, let me just show you guys the seat before I end of the video. I almost forgot to show you guys that. The seat itself is very, very simple. It's also electronic operated. So basically, you got your phone choose. Yeah, controls right here itself so just the height and the angle of the seat itself and you also got the memory function which is the same thing that you get for the 5 series as well as the 3 series itself but other than that that is all for this video itself if you guys enjoy the video do click the subscribe button down right below to see more videos like this or click subscribe and click my two other videos and with that i'll see you guys in my next video